When I was a young woman, I realized that I cared a lot about poverty and hunger, went to school, studied nutrition, went out in the world to help poor people. And little by little, I found out that it wasn't a problem of people not knowing how to feed their children. Either their land had been stolen from them, like in Central America by the big fruit companies, or when I worked in little villages of Africa, I saw these big corporations would come in, convince women not to breastfeed their babies, give them powdered milk, and the babies would be dying in my arms because the mothers didn't have enough money to keep buying the powdered milk. They'd use dirty water that got the kids sick. And I started thinking, wait, these problems are systemic. And I could either just spend my life trying to take a Band-Aid and put it on this gaping wound, or I could try to figure out what was behind it, uh, what were the economic forces that led to poverty and misery, and try to work on the systemic level. I think what we see in the U.S. policy, particularly foreign policy, is a combination of imperial hubris, which is we can go in and engineer other people's societies because we are so powerful, along with this real military industrial complex that makes billions of dollars by keeping us engaged in wars. Corporate money runs this country, whether it's the corruption in the election system, whether it's the way our media is corporate controlled, uh, whether it's the way we're constantly in wars now, perpetual wars, because we have corporations that make billions of dollars from war, um, that the system is very integrated. And so in our own minds, we have to recognize that we are fighting the whole system. Now that can sound very overwhelming, or it can actually sound exciting because there's so many different ways that you can enter into being part of the solution. Where do you invest your own dollars? Are you putting your money into a corporate bank or are you putting it in a credit union? There are campaigns to get public financing of elections. There's a peace movement that needs a lot more people because otherwise we're going to continue to be in the state of perpetual war. But I think that it is very exciting to think about how to create the alternatives so that we're not always saying we're against this, we're against that, we're against the corporate control, we're against the wars, we're against the corrupt political system. What are we for? I think when people look at how we move to a different system, it's all about building power and all about connectivity. How can I, as an individual, use my passion to build power in the movement that I'm most concerned of and then connect my piece of the pie with the other ones? So if you're really concerned about workers' rights, join the union movement and push for higher pay for workers, for better benefits. But then within that movement, how can I connect to other movements so that the power is then doubled and tripled and that we are greater than the sum of our parts? So how do I connect the union movement to the movement that's working for alternative kinds of media or community-based alternative education systems, uh, or pick one other movement that's outside your movement to connect to. And then it's so much easier for us at some point to connect all of these dots because we haven't spent all our time focusing on one piece of the movement. We've used some of our time, some of our energy, some of our resources to make the connections.